Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I provide a walkthrough for our intuition as to what happens with first degree price discrimination. So remember, with first degree price discrimination, we have a situation with a firm with market power, a firm who's able to identify individual consumers and their willingness to pay, and then a consumer or a firm who's able to prevent resale so that they can charge different prices to each consumers. With first degree price discrimination, we are thinking about a situation where each firm is, or each consumer is charged exactly their willingness to pay. So what's the maximal amount that you'd pay for a good? That's your price, right? Okay, so I'll give us a demand curve, 10 minus Q. I'll give us a marginal cost, constant marginal cost of two. What would a single price monopoly do here? Well, the single price monopoly is gonna produce the output where marginal cost is gonna be equal to marginal revenue. So here's marginal revenue, 10 minus two Q is equal to two. You might wonder why? Well, marginal revenue is gonna have the same intercept, same vertical intercept as demand, but twice the slope. So it's gonna be 10 minus two Q. And so what's the other explanation for why is that the case? Well, we could write out profit. Profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So here is price in terms of quantity times quantity minus two Q. Uh, distributing, I have 10 Q minus Q squared minus two Q. And then taking a derivative, I have 10 minus two Q minus two is equal to zero. And then solving the monopoly's quantity is four. Or if we just wanna say, well, here's the demand curve. Marginal revenue has the same intercept and twice the slope. We could just simply set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost and find a quantity of four. Either way, we have to find the associated price. Remember, prices come from demand curves, so we have to evaluate the demand relationship at the quantity of four. Clearly, the price is going to be six. What would the competitive market do? Well, the competitive market is going to produce where price is equal to marginal cost. So I'll set 10 minus Q equal to two and solve for Q. It'd be a quantity of eight. What's going to be the price? Prices come from demand curves, the price is gonna be two. But we knew that already because in the competitive market, the price has to be two, uh, marginal cost, right? So in the competitive market, here's just that work. Price is equal to marginal cost. Okay, demand is equal to marginal cost of two. So where we get a quantity of eight. If price is equal to marginal cost, what's the price? It's just the marginal cost of two. We can see this graphically. So here's our single price monopoly outcome. So I've got my demand curve. If price is equal to 10 minus Q, then our horizontal intercept is 10, our vertical intercept is 10. Marginal cost is two, it's a constant marginal cost. This is telling us the marginal cost is gonna be two for all units produced. The monopoly wants to produce where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. Marginal revenue has the same vertical intercept and twice the slope. Where marginal revenue is zero is gonna to correspond to the midpoint of the demand curve actually, and the point where demand is unit elastic. Anyway, so, the monopoly is gonna produce a quantity of four because we found that that's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. It's gonna sell at a quantity of eight. This is telling us that the, monop the single price monopolist is gonna set, is gonna sell four units all at a price of eight. So everybody's gonna pay a price of eight. What would the competitive firm do? The competitive firm would sell twice as much. They'd sell a quantity of eight charging a price of two. Okay, that tells us that there's gonna be deadweight loss. So in the single price monopoly case, relative to the competitive case, there's deadweight loss because these four units are neither produced nor consumed. That's bad, it's, if it's inefficient because here the demand curve, the benefit to buyers is above the supply curve, the cost, the marginal cost curve, the cost to sellers. That tells us that there'd be gains from trade and there'd be economic efficiency promoted if we actually produce and consume these units. Nevertheless, it's not happening. Why? Because the monopolist produces a smaller amount to raise their price and to generate profits. If we produced all the way out to a quantity of eight, then the entire area under the demand curve and above the supply curve, above the cost curve, would be consumer surplus with zero economic profit for sellers. By selling a smaller quantity and charging a higher price, that's where the monopoly's profits are coming from. So we have a smaller consumer surplus and we have deadweight loss. Suppose the monopolist wants to capture more of that surplus. Maybe it's able to practice first degree price discrimination. So if it were able to, if it had the information and the ability to do so, it would actually produce the, the competitive quantity. It'd produce a quantity of eight and it would sell to each consumer exactly a price equal to their willingness to pay, which means for the first degree price discrimination case, the demand curve is the marginal revenue curve. Marginal revenue is the contribution to revenue for each additional unit sold. And if I'm selling each additional unit for exactly what somebody's willing to pay for it, then my demand, which is captured by the demand curve, then my demand curve is my marginal revenue curve, right? Each, each sells each unit at a different price equal to the consumer's willingness to pay. 
that creates a situation where if this is marginal revenue and this is the price we're selling at, here's my costs, the entire area under the demand curve is going to be producer surplus rather than consumer surplus that would result if the market, if the competitive quantity was, so, was sold by a competitive market. Let's compare first degree price discrimination to the single price monopoly. So the single price monopoly produced a quantity of four, sold at a price of eight. The price discriminating monopoly is going to sell a quantity of eight at prices along the demand curve corresponding to willingness to pay. So the, with single price monopoly, the quantity is going to be much smaller than the first degree price discrimination case. What's going to happen with first degree price discrimination is that these consumers corresponding to the, to the distance along the demand curve between these orange dots are going to be served with price discrimination, whereas they would have been ignored by the single price monopolist. So these consumers are able to access the product, whereas previously they would have been ignored. This is the lower portion of the demand curve relative to what the monopoly wants to sell. Usually monopolies might ignore the bottom portion of the demand curve because they can't profitably serve these customers, except by first degree price discrimination. So in comparison between first degree price discrimination and the single price monopoly, consumers with willingness to pay between 8 and 10, well, those consumers are losing. Consumers with willingness to pay between 8 and 10, that's this portion of the demand curve, they're losing with the first degree price discrimination because now their price is like 10, 9, eight, whereas previously the price would have just been eight. So these people with a high willingness to pay are going to be paying $2 more with a single with price discrimination than with a single price monopolist. So these individuals would much rather have a regular monopoly. What about these people here? I mean, they're technically indifferent between buying and not buying when they're served by a first degree price discriminating monopoly because they're going to have zero consumer surplus, but they're going to be able to get the good, whereas previously they wouldn't have been able to. So I say consumers with willingness to pay between two and eight, this portion of the demand curve, are going to win with first degree price discrimination because they're served, whereas they previously would have been ignored by the single price monopolist. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video, like or whatever, and I'll see you next time.